Today, in this episode 4, we still on, what can be created by using the blend tool. And we gonna create this look. This is my fourth video tutorial about blend tools. And for this time I will show the process of creating graphic elements that resemble colored waves. In this process, only blend and gradient tools are used to create graphic elements like this. What I will show in this tutorial, is just a basic concept in general, to create something like this. The rest, it depends on all of you, to create graphic elements more than this, using only of the blend tool. If you find this video helpful, you can support this channel by subscribe, share, like, and comment. Okay, let's get started. First, create a new document. For the size of the artboard, it depends on you. In this video, I use 1920 by 1080 pixels. Next, is to create a background. I use the rectangle tool, to draw a rectangle according to the size of the artboard. For the color, I use the gradient tool, to give it a gradient color. For the first gradient color, I filled with E, 9, 0, 1, 8, B. And for the second color with 2, D, 9, A, D, 5. Don't forget to set the angle to minus 45 degree. As usual, I always lock the layer, where the background is drawn. And create a new layer for the next step. This makes it easier for us to organize the objects, by placing them on a different layer. In this episode, we will create a blended object that is simpler than the previous episode. We only need two lines, that have a wavy shape which will be blended. To create that two lines, just using the pen tool for easier control. And don't forget to set the fill to none and the stroke to white color. Start with a single anchor point, and drag down the handle, about 45 degrees to the right. Do the same way for the next anchor point. This is one of the ways to create smooth and organic curves. Just specify the location of the next anchor point randomly, and drag the handle down, about 45 degrees to the right, if the line starts from the left. Just duplicate that line to create the second line by press the ALT key on Windows and drag it down. Actually, I could just make another different wavy line. But, the final result when you blend the same wavy line, with different wavy lines will produce different results. For the simple results, I just use the same wavy line. The important thing is you can get the point. The last thing is to set the stroke to 5 point, and set it to round cap, on the stroke panel over here. Now, it's time to use the blend tool. You can access it on the toolbar over here. Or, you can also go to the object menu. Blend, and make. The second step of blending objects is to open the blend option panel. Double click the blend tool icon on the toolbar to open it. Or, you can access it in the object menu. Blend, and blend option. On the blend options panel change the spacing into specified distance, and set the value to 1 pixel. Just keep the orientation and click OK. After the two lines have been blended, the result still looks flat. It's because the both lines only have one white color. Just ignore it. Next, we will apply spine to the blended object. Create a new line using the pen tool. Draw lines that look like letters S. The trick in creating a smooth, organic curved line, is to start by creating an anchor point, pull down the cursor about 45 degrees in the direction of the line to be made. Don't let the cursor go until the anchor point's handle is visible. The longer the handle you make, the greater the curved line created. It takes more practice to master it. Finally, make the end of the line by creating the last anchor point. Pull down the handle, and adjust it until the curved lines match as expected. Select the blended object in the line. Go to the object menu. Blend. And replace spine. As you can see, the shape we want hasn't shown any results yet. So, we have to give it some color. By double clicking on a blended object, indirectly you open the isolation mode. And, you can modify objects in it. As you can see, there are three lines. 
The first two lines are wavy lines made for blending. And the third is a wavy line that is made to be a spine. You can edit all these lines, one by one, using the direct selection tool. You can also see it in detail in the layer panel. Where in this layer panel shows that we are in isolation mode. In this mode there is a layer, which says, blend. Which means a blended object. Which then contains the three wavy line layers, that mentioned earlier. And you can freely rename each layer for easy identification. Now, because we are already in isolation mode. So, we can change the color. Select one of these lines and apply a gradient color. You can select a line directly on the artboard. Or, you can also choose one or more objects in this layer panel, by clicking on the target icon on the layer. This little red square icon means, that the object is being selected. And you can hold the shift key to select more than one object. Okay, the next steps is. Open the gradient panel on the Windows menu, if you don't get it in the collapse panel over here. Just pull out the gradient panel, and drag it to the side, to make it wide. This is needed, because we can make the gradient color more detailed. Here, I have prepared the color palette. So, we can easily add color to the gradient panel. With wavy lines still selected. Just select the first color stop on the right, then select the color picker over here. And choose the pink one from the color palette that I made. Add more gradient stop on the gradient slider. Activate the color picker. And click the color on the color palette. Just as simple as that. If the color picker is still activated, you no longer need to reactivate it when you create a new color stop. Just create a new color stop and choose an existing color. There is one trick, that you don't have to create a new color stop, when it has the same color as the previous color stop. You only need to duplicate it. Hold down the Alt key on Windows, and drag the color stop that you want to duplicate to a new place. This trick is very useful when you are working on gradient sliders. Okay, it's done. Now I just need to modify it until you satisfied for the results. But wait, there's still something left behind. We still have to give a gradient color to the other wavy line. This time, we don't need to open the gradient panel, and give it color one by one. We just need to select that line, and use the eyedropper tool to choose the color we will use. And for this case, we choose the color gradient that we made earlier, on this wavy line. One more thing I need to say is, that when you want to modify it, you can just move it or change the size, or even rotate it to get different results. Finally, if this video is very useful, please subscribe, like, or share this video to help this channel grow. Or if you have questions, or else, about the contents of this video, you can comment below.